What's up guys, Rep here. So today we're going to be talking about a series of controversies involving the VTubing convention Ofkai Expo 2024. This is a California-based event that is set to launch later this month. Now, only a few weeks ago, a lot of people, including myself, were praising Ofkai for coming to a mutual decision, a mutual agreement with Niji Sanji that had those Niji Sanji Ian members who were supposed to attend Ofkai this year removed because both parties believed that their presence at this convention would not be conducive to a positive convention experience. However, okay. we have seen another party removed from Ofkai Expo this year, and that is the content creator Kirsha. Now, this was not a mutual decision. Rather, she was someone who was set to appear at a panel for this year and was removed recently That's because crazy. of some absolutely ridiculous reasons. These reasons include volunteers who are putting pressure on the convention because they felt uncomfortable about tweets that Kirsha had made oh, about pronouns do? and oh, her no. criticism of DEI initiatives. Yes, that is why we are now blacklisting someone as a guest from a convention. And this is because some dumb asses felt uncomfortable with her being around. Holy shit! But uh, I mean, people just say I don't agree with what she said. It hurts my feelings. Oh, shut the fuck up. Absolutely ridiculous because if you did any research into who Kirsha is, it wouldn't be surprising because she is a very vocal critic of all things woke culture. So her tweets about these things and her videos about these topics that offended these volunteers should not have come as a surprise and seems like they have a very bad issue with their screening of their guests at the very minimum. Now, I have already reviewed this situation and I was someone and my wife was someone who were supposed to be featured guests through a third party at Ofkai Expo this year. And giving an update from these tweets I made yesterday, uh, we will not be uh, attending Ofkai this year. We've already made the decision okay. that what oh, so we're seeing with Kirsha is concerning enough that I don't want to be a part of it. Me and my wife, we don't want to be a part of something like this where people are being blacklisted because volunteers are getting Good offended by jokes. So we've already made our decision on that because we feel that strongly about this issue. Now, everything I'm going to cover in the coming minutes Her, yeah, will come from Kirsha's yeah, latest stream on Twitch going over the situation and also DMs and screenshots that she shared with me privately that I have the go-ahead to share with you guys for this video. So everything began with this DM from Kirsha here saying, Hey there, Ofkai Expo peoples. I was slated to be on a panel for the upcoming Ofkai. However, I just received notice today that I would be apparently too risky, too risky to have on the right? said panel by the Ofkai organizers, and I'm curious what the issue is. And the official Ofkai Expo account replies saying, Hey Kirsha, sorry for the back and forth. We usually ask to approve any co-panelists ahead of time, but this case fell through the cracks. We okay. hope you understand that given the current uh, tumultuous state of VTubing, we would like to avoid collaboration with somewhat polarizing creators such as yourself. <laughs> what is that even supposed to mean? What? That is such a ridiculous response. Uh, yeah, go fuck yourself. Now, of course, polarizing creators, if she is polarizing, someone like me is obviously polarizing and a lot of other people at the convention are polarizing in the eyes of some people out there yeah, so it's very very actually, odd that like actually no proper reason given just said you're somewhat polarizing so like we we prefer you not not having you there which is like but they would have known her character beforehand anyway so this it, they didn't even say what the issue is. They didn't even say what the issue is. It's literally as people, it, it's it's cancel culture. Your show it is being literally just cancel right culture. Get go, and also it seems like it's already on the fault of Ofkai, who admits right here that the screening wasn't proper and that someone who is so controversial apparently slipped through the cracks. Now, she would respond saying, I actually do not understand as I personally have no issues getting sponsors, short or long term, with both products and games. Would I do not promote that? hateful rhetoric, and I am genuinely surprised would that I would be that? blacklisted from your convention. It feels more like a single person who dislikes me has poisoned the well. 
you guys have hosted VTubers who have participated in harassment campaigns, Yo. which leaves me even more confused as to what part of my content would be a problem. There's Yo, call them out! Jesus! What the fuck? They have hosted VTubers that participated in harassment campaigns. What? Bro, I never even heard of Ofkai um, Expo. Never heard of them. Right? From what I've seen, they're, like, American-based or whatever. Like, what I saw in the screenshot earlier, but I have no idea about them, so I wouldn't know who they hosted and who they did. But this is... Just looking at these is, is ridiculous. Like, who conversates like this? Definitely some truth to this that we will look at later in this video. But mentioning her sponsors here, much like Kirsha, I have had endless people go after my sponsors or events that I'm participating in, and I have never once been thrown under the bus like this. In other cases where people are trying to get people like me or Kirsha removed from sponsors or events, we are backed up. That's the thing. They back you up as a sponsor. They don't nice. just drop you because you made someone nice, uncomfy nice, nice. with one of your jokes about pronouns or something like that. And honestly, with my experience, I tend to find that these sponsors respect you even more when they see so many people complaining about you and they, they're there to have your back. But the Ofkai Expo account would reply saying this, I can assure you that no single person would have the ability to make such a uh -huh. call and that this is also not a sponsor related issue. Please understand that we are an all volunteer run event and your name coming up made a number of our staff uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. It made them uncomfortable. Bro, 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 bro. I, I've, I've seen this on Twitter before as well, where people have um, tried, like, hosting events, like, awards and whatnot, and, and they wanted to exclude people because those people have not been nice towards them and shit, but you cannot host a fair award show or an event, an expo, whatever, without excluding people like this. This is this is ridiculous. You can't just exclude people because someone makes you uncomfy. They, holy shit! What are you a fucking baby, man? Grow the fuck up! Oh, you are team a lot and do not want to cause issues this close to the convention. That is why the executive team made it or decided against having you participate in the panel. This is not a blacklisting. You are still free to attend or participate in other right. ways. I'm sorry, but this is the amount of information I'm able to share. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a blacklisting. You can't come as a panelist or a featured guest, but you can still give us money and attend the event yourself and be a you know, just a regular uh, attendee. Yikes. That's ridiculous. That is a blacklisting as a panelist. And now you're only giving the option to basically give off Kai Yikes. money and go there as a regular attendee. But anyways, also this whole thing about, you know, giving into the demands of these volunteers to not upset them, to not cause further issue. Mm, Boy, howdy, is this causing further issue by blacklisting someone like Kirsha as a guest? This is going to cause so much more of a headache than simply telling your volunteers to suck it up. Honestly, or basically what are they kick doing? rocks and go somewhere else or work with a different panel at this convention. This is such a PR disaster. Imagine this. Imagine someone with the size of Kirsha's who is considered a really based VTuber from what I've known and seen and from what like you guys have also told me, like a lot of you guys said you are watching Kirsha and wanted me to check out Kirsha's stuff, right? So people are gonna be upset at your expo. PR disaster incoming. And it's all deserved. But going forward, Kirsha would respond saying, I think if people are accusing me of making them uncomfortable, I have the right to know yep, what yep. I have said or done to <laughs> percent 100 percent this shit this fucking shit has happened to me uh, in like a private matters before where i was removed from a discord server because i've said something or apparently me being there made people uncomfortable and whatnot and i have never received a single reason as to what the sad thing or what the sad behavior was which is just bullshit 100% bullshit. This is bullshit. 
cause that, especially if it is affecting my ability to participate in panels and having an effect on my friends as well. And again, you have platform VTubers who are actively participating in harassment campaigns in the past, something I have never done. So I do not understand what the issue is with my presence. Also, you say this isn't blacklisting, is disingenuous. You are telling me I am not allowed to participate in panels, which is blacklisting. I haven't heard back from you guys today, and this is after a day of no response. And I would like to be able to rectify this privately if possible. However, if left no other option, I will be speaking about this publicly. Uh, Where then we get a response here saying, Hello, this is Lysander. I am the director of this year's Ofkai. And if you're open to it, I'd like to talk about this more in depth. And then he was able to give uh, Kirsha their Discord DMs. And that's where they would exchange the further conversations. So here you can see Lysander saying, I'm really sorry for interrupting you on a vacation like this. I guess I'll start with the what about X party situation. If you're referring to who I think you are, yes, they were a part of our event last year, but that was before everything went down. We chose this year to not continue to work with them. We aren't all know of each group or person we work with and try to do some basic screening, but sometimes things just don't get found. And I'm pretty sure I know who they are talking about in this section of the I DMs, got no idea and of course, who yeah, about. good on them for not inviting this person back from last year, but that- Chat, do you know who they're talking about? Because I don't know who, like, I don't, as I said, I don't know what Ofkai Expo is. I have, I don't know what Ofkai Expo is, hands down. You guys got any idea who they're referring to? I don't follow drama. <laughs> That's fair. That doesn't really change what's going on here with Kirsha, so- Lysander would continue on saying, our organization is made up of all volunteers from pretty much every background you can think of. No one is getting paid, so a lot of the difficulties of managing 100 plus people is making sure our team feels comfortable giving up their free time to help us. We have members on the Marina, staff who are fans of you and work mm -hmm. and your work and other members who are not. I think it is fair to say you are a bit controversial with a lot of your takes, especially for a staff largely based in California. Well, you know what? Props Fashion again work. to this director here for acknowledging that a lot of these issues have to do with the fact that this event is based in California and likely a what? lot of the volunteers are from California as well, where making fun of pronouns and things like that would greatly offend people like that. Same with criticizing DEI initiatives. That are like what, is California just full of a bunch of pussies or what's going on? are very well supported by people in California. And also, this part right here about some people like you, some people don't at this convention in terms of the volunteers, that's life. There's always going to be Basically, people yes, at feature that convention who some of the volunteers are going to like and some aren't. But you can't give in and say, well, some people don't like you, so basically you have to leave. That's absolutely ridiculous. But down here, Lysander would say, we did get a list of screenshots of things that made staff uncomfortable oh, if you do wish provide. to see some yes, of them. Yes, They're yes, mostly please. tweets that you've made in the past. Oh, please. And of course, uh, Kirsha would Jay, it, ask for some of the proof. The fuck is that? Uh, the fuck is that format? J fifth? J F I F? The fuck is that? Of these. Like. Am I stupid or is that like such an uncommon file type for a screenshot? What the fuck? Why is my model dying? Screenshots and say, hey, what exactly is going no, on here? Jeff. And also, we have seen comments here from Kirsha <laughs> saying, you know, she's not super familiar with how cons run. She has only done a meet and greet at WeebCon and she's setting something up with YumaCon in the future, but the people who would be uncomfortable with me could they simply just not work on the specific panel Legit? I was set to be on? Which, Legit? of course, is, yeah, the easiest solution. If you have over 100 volunteers and like, you have this one panel with Kirsha, just move them to another panel. Like, she's not a criminal or a dangerous person. They just don't like some okay. joke she made on Twitter. <laughs> I'm just thinking of, she's just gonna, like, stand there as a person... Or maybe in screen, I don't know what she was planning, how she was gonna attend. And then some other people are just gonna like, legit just feel like, looking at her, just feel like, no. Her existence is hurting me. Uh, I'm gonna cry. Oh, it's painful. Just move them to another part of the convention. But of course, Lysander would provide all of these uh, screenshots that the volunteers provided as evidence that she was 
too much, too controversial to be at this convention. And you can see, even the way Lysander describes them. I haven't seen the screenshots yet. I don't follow uh, Kirsch actively on uh, Twitter, I don't think. I don't do a lot of Twitter things to begin with, to be honest. Um, so I'm very curious about the things she has would have said. From what I've heard now, it was some sort of joke opinion or whatever from what I've heard from you guys commenting and what Ref has said so far, so... A lot of them have come down to gender identity in DEI type issues. I'm, I'm sorry, this is gonna be probably sound stupid, but, but what is DEI? What does DEI mean? Like, I, I guess g gender identity, obviously, I get that, but what is DEI? A lot of people boycott this. Yeah, I hope so too, this is bullshit. So VTuber Convention on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. I see, also, I see. And if you don't know what DEI is, Diversity, oh. Equity, and Inclusion. <laughs> Leave it to me to pause at the worst point every time. Every fucking time. And I'll let her go over this quickly. This was featured in this clip right here during her stream. And she will talk about some of these screenshots and exactly what was going on here. Yo, leave. We did get a list of screenshots of things that made staff uncomfortable. If you do wish let's to see, see some let's of see. them, please, please, they are mostly please. tweets that you've made in the past. Oh, don't worry, chat. They are freaking amusing. A few let's go. Later. And I said, you say mostly tweets. I'm interested in what was given as reasoning beside the tweets. And he responded, a lot of them come down to gender identity and diversity, equity, and inclusion type issues. Oh, shit. Here we go again. And it shows seven screenshots nice. here. I'll bring those up. There's seven screenshots that I was given. And here are the screenshots in question. This is all of the screenshots provided by the volunteers as proof that she was too controversial for this event. And she is fully transparent about this. She shared this on Twitter and she shared all this evidence with me on Discord. There is nothing here that warrants any sort of an extreme reaction or that would make someone extremely uncomfortable or feel unsafe to the point where Kirsha should be blacklisted as a guest from Ofkai. Let's look we at some of these tweets that were provided this. as evidence of like her The only wrongdoing. thing I can see is the middle one. Okay, so here's one saying, after its last strange decision to get rid of everyone's discriminator, Discord seems to be rolling out a pronoun feature for your body. Burger Queen. I have... Come on. You can't... You can't take the shit serious. Like, a lot of people use this quote-unquote pronoun thing on Discord for anything else. I've seen so many people use it for something else. It's just a free field. It's like... Burger Queen and Elite Pronoun. Honestly? Based. <laughs> Honestly based. This is the same as if you're using in Twitter. Like Twitter gives you a lot of options like uh, uh, in your Twitter uh, bio for like links, where you're from and whatnot, birthday. And you can write in there whatever the fuck you want to. It's the same as doing that. Like my location on Twitter is in my bed. That's the same logic behind this. It's the same logic. Bio, where she used the pronoun Burger Queen as a joke. This is evidence that she is too controversial to be a Burger guest Queen. at Offkai. And also, you will notice right like, here. Imagine just using an extra field for however the fuck you like to. Imagine. So controversial, so hurty feeling, so uncomfy. The word pronoun is in bold. The reason this is happening because when the person was getting these screenshots, the volunteers, they were keyword searching pronoun on her account to find these tweets in the first place. Lamau. They were searching out these Lamau. tweets to be offended by them and then to complain about them. They were looking to be offended. That should tell you about the disingenuous nature of we these volunteers. Going forward, you can see another highlighted pronoun right here. So this was a comment she made about YouTube adding pronouns to your about section. So she says this, gotta notice that YouTube added pronouns to their creator profiles. I am glad that as a part Italian, my preferred pronoun of 
A <laughs> is available in the initial drop. Again, evidence that she is too dangerous to be a part of this convention. Oh my god. Here's another one where she says, they didn't say other than the pick related, it happened a day after a post I made on pronoun people infecting some anime wiki. So basically she was identifying pronoun people as responsible for falsely and mass flagging her Twitter account to the point the where she was deemed ineligible for ad revenue sharing. A wow. pretty serious thing on Twitter. What and honestly, fuck? knowing the totality of those circumstances, her observations are pretty fair to say the least. And also, she would directly call out one of the screenshots provided that we're going to look at next, where she said, the second screenshot is literally me giving the definition for acronyms. What? Like, I didn't even make that up. It's on Google. Lamo? Where the director replies saying, yeah, I get it. But it was basically to show a general attitude of disdain for it all. all and I get that. You're entitled to your free speech and thoughts on the matter. Very much respect that. And here is the screenshot. Now, in the screenshot provided by the volunteers, this part right here is cropped out. It only shows her response, which even the response without context is fair. Uh, it was but a this response. person asked a question based on another tweet saying, what even is 2SLG? Ain't no way, she did a literal response. It was a literal response. And it gets shown as an example. You can't make this shit up, man. You cannot make this shit up. This is so full of bullshit. Either way, what the fuck is this anyway? In the US, we have LGBTQQIP2SAA. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, questioning, intersex, pansexual, two-spirit, asexual, and ally. Two-spirit? The hell is two-spirit? But in Canada, they have two SLGBTQI+, and the plus is people who identify as part of sexual and gender diverse communities. Hope this helps. It doesn't. I don't understand. I'm too stupid to understand this. 2S is two-spirit, where apparently some Native American stuff. How does this have anything to do with... Like, the LGBTQ? The, f the fuck? Yeah, whatever. I'm, pro I'm probably just gonna be made out as ignorant because I'm not understanding. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be made ignorant because I don't understand this. Something about the other gender soul being inside... <sighs> what? What? The next thing is going to be a fucking math problem. The next one is gonna be like the fucking password game. Because they saw it as disrespect. Some will call that schizophrenic. <laughs> oh my god. Was in Canada for almost a year, still don't get it. They're also an animal soul in them. <laughs> that shit's getting so ridiculous, man. Like. Holy shit. You wanna cancel me for that garbage? Go on. It's ridiculous either way. BTQI++++ And Kirsha would respond with the actual definition provided by Google. She was answering a question that was about an acronym where she found the information on Google. She was just giving what Google was providing. But this is somehow hateful or dismissive of these sorts nah, of things. Kitsu. And here's another uh, screenshot that was provided as proof, of course. Whoa. Interacting with a, an undesirable, like, Sam Hyde up, uh, lock her up, put a, a scarlet letter A on her for the rest of her life. We all know that this harmless reply was something that was only featured because <laughs> it included Sam Hyde. I think that's very obvious. People from California are the types so of volunteers offended by her pronoun win. jokes would definitely be very offended by someone like Sam Hyde and the fact that Kirsha made a simple reply. I, I don't really know who Sam Hyde is. Again, my uneducated self is gonna show. And... Hi kids in chat, just came in from watching your latest video, I found out a lot about myself, apparently I'm a gay trans, um, grape, it seems it isn't much better here, Lamar. <laughs> yes, hi. So, I don't know who Sam Hyde is, but on the topic of male winning, or like, Sam, well now I'm assuming again, right? Sam winning a women's weightlifting competition, so from what I'm gathering, Sam is a biological male. 
winning a women's weightlifting competition. I'm gonna say it, and people are gonna hate me for it, because it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing that, um, for example, that, um, from what I know, uh, Decker Rowling has said, where a biological male transitioning to a female still has biological um, advantages over a biological female, and thus uh, them competing in the same competition is unfair. And I stand by that. It is unfair. Now, Solution to this? I don't fucking know. I don't have a solution for this. It is not my job to find a solution to this. But it is fucking unfair. And it is not about being inclusivity or being about against them or being transphobic or anything. It is just hands down unfair to biological women. Solution, embrace ancient Rome traditions. <laughs> like, I don't know, make a... People are gonna hate this too if I, uh, if I or anyone else would say, make a, uh, make a, uh, what do you call it? I don't know, English, right? Uh, make a competition where only trans people could enter in for that fact. But then they would be like, yeah, but now you're like showing off that only trans people can go there instead of the women's one. Yeah, well, it is a biological difference. Like, you're never gonna make anyone happy here. That's never gonna be happy. No one is ever gonna be happy with this issue. All I know is, biologically, and for that matter, logically, it is unfair. It is just unfair for trans people to compete in the biological competitions for that same shit. I don't know wording. I'm sorry. Don't fucking hang me. English isn't my main language. It's, it's, it's stupid. There's an entire South Park episode about that. That shit is so funny, man. That shit is so funny. To one of his tweets. And here's another one that was provided as evidence where she calls out DEI initiatives, where in one tweet and a video that she provided, Tim Poole was basically celebrating that DEI initiatives were allegedly dead, that they're being defeated, where she says, hold on, there's even greater threats out there that you shouldn't be ignoring, like Bridge, which is another very, very big DEI initiative, something we talked about on this channel about a month ago. This is a very serious issue where these DEI initiatives are supposed to be ingrained in every baby. aspect of your life. Wow. As the directors of this initiative say, it should be blasted at you non-stop until these initiatives become a part of your DNA and you don't even question it anymore. That seems a bit ridiculous. So I think her criticism of that is fair and a part of free speech, by the way. But going forward, there would be a lot of conversation about the process of running this convention and a lot of basically arguing over semantics and also the size of the convention and how having a volunteer staff makes things more complicated. But I think what is most Number important three. down here I is Kirsha simply asking, from the screenshots you have shown, I have done nothing wrong and said nothing hateful. You said there was, no, there was more complaints besides the tweet, so I'm curious as to what those were. And we would really never get an answer to that. Of course not. So we move on to this next section where Kirsha would say, I would like to think that unless the person in question has done something actually terrible, like calls for violence against a person or a group, dock someone, assault someone, groom someone underage, that any volunteer could just ignore someone they Literally. don't like existing. I just shouldn't ignore them. I, should, I shouldn't have to have How opportunities sacrificed it? in my career, nor should my friend's time, effort, and planning get mucked up because someone didn't like a few tweets that I sent. Tweets that aren't even hateful, much less something genuinely bad or illegal. There are people I don't like and I wouldn't seek to harm their prospects. And Lysander would reply saying, so this one is a lot harder to speak on as I am not exactly qualified, but I'll try. From your point of view and your perspective, a lot of what you are saying are harmless jokes, a jab, asking questions and dismissing ridiculous ideas or concepts 
but from someone who's closer to that community or is part of that community that you are making those jokes about, see it very much more than just jokes. It does feel hostile because generally right. it is one of those snowball effects that can quickly turn into something more. This is one of those political points that is exhausting. Either side of this debate will rarely see the other point, point side and as close to a valid argument like trying to have a debate about abortion or something, I don't think you'll see what they mean, but the general discourse that you tend to contribute to is very worrying to them. You know, very worrying, like making your pronouns Burger Queen on Discord. So now this so next section is pretty heavily censored and for good reason to respect the privacy of some other- Guys, 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 uh, stop arguing about it in the chat. Like, drop the topic, guys guests and also to not drag in unnecessary people but they're being used in these dms as examples where kirsha would mention someone who's also been attacked by people who have attempted to remove her from this event as well for x y and z and those reasons are similar or even worse than what kirsha is being punished for however that situation was treated very differently than how kirsha is being treated and of course down here Kirsha would mention, I hope that mentioning this person to you will have no negative repercussions for her. She's only mentioning this whole thing because she has defended her in the past and there's a great disparity of how these two parties are being treated where Lysander says that they're not even going to bring this other person up to their staff because it would be too upsetting for them right now, which is uh, very interesting. But moving on to this next section, again, I'm gonna have to do some censoring myself to protect some of the people mentioned. But basically, there is this person who is brought up as an example of someone who was attacked for similar reasons in last year's Ofkai, where okay. people were trying to get them deplatformed and removed. However, in that case, last year, the event staff rallied behind this VTuber and defended them and made sure that they were going to continue on as a guest. Now, very similar circumstances happen this year involving Kirsha, but the opposite result happens where she is thrown under the bus to protect the interests and feelings of these volunteers who appear to have way too much influence in the decision making involving guests featured at Off Kai this year. And then they're just kind of arguing some semantics here, nothing super important in this section, but they eventually come to a head and realize that this is not going anywhere anymore and they've made their, their opinions known and that's gonna do it for this conversation. And when I saw these DMs before Kirsha's stream even went live yesterday, I had already made up my mind, me and my wife, as guests through a third party, would not be attending unless Kirsha would be, once again, re-invited and unblacklisted from Ofkai. But very soon after this, it seems obvious that at the moment, she's not coming back. And at the very least, even if she did come back, I don't really know if me or my wife would want to come back to Ofkai after everything that's happened, the way they have treated people unfairly like Kirsha. It's not something I want to support, and I will take the sacrifice of removing myself from this situation because it's something that I believe in. It aligns with my principles. I cannot, based on my own principles, support an event that will blacklist someone for what Kirsha has been blacklisted for. It's completely unfair, and if someone who I don't agree with personally was See blacklisted for unfair reasons like Kirsha would, I would still defend them too. I would have the exact same approach because what they're doing is not fair. It now, is so overall, unfair. my tweet has been met with an overwhelming amount of positive support, but she there are some people saying that basically we all deserve, deserve to be removed. There. Sorry, I was talking over him, my bad. Uh, she was blacklisted for a reason. If you stand with her, you don't deserve to attend either. Uh, obviously, someone fucking misinformed, someone who doesn't actually know what the fuck is going on. Twitter disease, man amount of positive support but there are some people saying that basically we all deserve to be removed and this tweet right here this quote really sums up the manufactured outrage that is surrounding this situation so you have a vtuber here saying she was blacklisted for a reason if you stand with her you don't deserve to attend either now of course it's a privilege to be at a convention like this but it's also a privilege for conventions uh, to have content creators who want to spend their time and show up and participate. And I am choosing to walk away because I believe what is happening to Kirsha is that unfair and that it against is. my morals that I am willing to ridiculous. walk away from it. Now, if you want to see what artificial support looks like, this tweet has 14 likes. Now, if you go to the likes, you can see that the VTuber themselves they like their own themselves. tweets. 
And then you'll see a variation of the name Yua in oh, all fuck. of these likes. So Yua, Yua right Yua. here. A second Another Yua. Yua. A third Yua. Uh, Yua, Yua. A fourth Yua related account. A fifth Yikes. Yua related account. A sixth one. A seventh Another one. one uh, and then a more, VTuber agency that fuck? only mentions that same VTuber. So that's eight. And then nine the and fuck? ten. Ten out of the fourteen likes are from the same pre-debut VTuber. What? You want to talk about manufactured what? outrage? This person them. went on ten different accounts to like this tweet saying that Kirsha and I don't Kirsha deserve Mark? to be at Offkai. It's that ridiculous. Now, speaking of manufactured outrage, we also have some tweets from the VTuber journalist Ducky. Ooh. He is someone Ooh. who is famous for not only supporting the Hogwarts legacy harassment campaign, Yikes. but he's also someone who's tried to cancel the VTuber Kyo on many occasions, claiming he's spreading things Kyo? like libel, for example, with his coverage of VTuber news and drama. And you can see at one point he did have VTuber, VTuber journalist Yikes. in his name. And he's also someone who has said that whether you you call yourself a journalist or not, if you cover VTuber-related news and drama, you should be held to the same standards as a journalist. Now, since then, Ducky has rebranded. He is no longer a journalist. He is a writer, which doesn't free him of his own standards, I guess. But instead of doing journalism, he now tells VTuber stories. And here's his latest story saying this. Reminder, conventions aren't obligated to give you the spotlight. Much like you're allowed to say... Uh, whatever you want, they can also choose to not platform that for whatever reason. It's a privilege, not a right. After all that's happened this year, I'm pretty convinced VTubing doesn't deserve Offkai. Everyone is acting like the petulant fuck? children to try to sway decisions. Offkai isn't perfect, but the community is acting absolutely feral. If you don't like it, go to another convention. You know what? He's right. Like I yeah. said earlier, this Be is a privilege to there. attend conventions. But it's also a privilege for them to have people like me and Kirsha take time out of our schedule to yep. attend this event. And also, by the way, promote this event and encourage 100%. people to come to Offkai. And one thing I want to make clear here, too. I had not announced publicly that me or my wife were attending Offkai until just now. So I wasn't jipping anyone from my community. They didn't know about this yet. But now that we've seen everything with Kirsha, yeah, I am not going to give Offkai my support and my time and my community support either. I will leave it up to them if they want to continue supporting Offkai. It's within their right, but they're not going to do it through me. I'm going to let my opinion be known and I'm going to use my privilege as my position here to say my feelings on the situation and to take a stand against something that I think is wrong. And here we see all this nonsense about everyone acting like petulant children. The people acting like petulant children are the volunteers getting upset and literally Keyword searching tweets on accounts to be offended mm. by jokes that they know will offend them. They are searching out reasons so to be offended. That so is ridiculous. childish to me. And of course, as no, Curry Wolfie. Ringy here points out, Ducky is extremely, extremely hypocritical on this subject. He is saying okay. that basically Offkai has the right to get rid of whoever they want when only a few weeks ago they complained about Offkai removing Niji Sanji EN members, which was a mutual oh. agreement, by the way. This wasn't whoa, a one-side black... Whoa, look, look at that. Whoa, how the turns have tabled, wouldn't you see? Listening <laughs> like it is with Kirsha, that was a mutual agreement, and he said in response he's never been more disappointed with the community because this is all a bunch of tribalism and unfair treatment. Ridiculous. But anyways, that is the situation involving Ofkai. Again... It is a very unfortunate situation and is something that I wish didn't happen because I wish I could have just attended this event. I was looking forward to it, but now, no, it's been muddied and I, I don't want to support what's going on at Offkai. And I think they have created an infinite amount of trouble for themselves because they it's couldn't tell a couple of their volunteers bad. no. And they couldn't have them work on different panels. Instead, they caved in. They caved in to the demands of these people, and now they have rewarded this behavior. What kind of a precedent does this set for Offkai and other VTubing and anime conventions where now there is a precedent out there that if you complain enough about a guest who you're personally offended by, that will get them removed. That is the standard that Offkai is creating, and I will not support it. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, feel Crazy. free to share all of your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Actually crazy. Shit's wild. Shit's fucking wild, man.